creating reusable templates. These are particularly useful for things like sublimation and various other arts and crafts. Now, what we want is the whole thing on an eight and a half by 11 inch standard US letter size page. Now I've got two here. There's one. This is a, this is a whole page and it's got four individual sections on there. And you can see over the right hand side that each one has an image placed into that section. The other option we've got are artboards. There's artboard one and artboard two. Now each one of these little artboards has a name like artboard or you can give actually give them a name. But this, this one here of course will overwrite whatever's in there. And you can see there's an image in there. There we go over to that side. Now these ones have actual images in them, but you can place images in them that are actually embedded images, which is a whole different thing. But we'll come to that when we come to that in a moment. Right now, we've got two simple things. That one's eight and a half by 11 inch. That artboard's eight and a half by 11 inch. And we've got four sections in it. And this one here, we've got multiple little sections. You might have lots of different things in there. So let's go right ahead and I'll show you how to create these. Step by step so that you can easily follow them. Now the first one we're going to create is this one. Plain 8.5 by 11 inch US letter size paper. And that's one of our presets. So let's go up here, File, New, and we'll select letter 8.5 or 11 inch if you like by 8.5. Let's make sure it's portrait mode. That's up and down, letter. Now we'll leave everything as it is, DPI, margins, the whole lot, because this is only an exercise after all. But it is an 8.5 by 11 inch sheet of paper. So let's begin by creating that. Now, as you saw in the original, what we've got there is a simple plain sheet of paper. Now we want to put some, we want to put some areas in that where we can control the images. So for that we'll use rounded rectangle tool. You'll see over the left hand side there, I finally got it to highlight by leaving the cursor on it. Let's go over here. And at the moment, there are no borders, no nothing on it. So let's just make it about the size of a, an iPhone screen if you like, or a smartphone screen if you don't particularly like iPhones. Now I want a border around that so you can clearly see it. So let's go up to the top there and select the line and we'll make the width a nice big one, four, five, six, seven. Let's make it an eight point border. There we go. Now, you couldn't get better than that. That's exactly what we want. Let's go back to there. Now, the fill in there is a greyish colour at the moment. But what I want is a pure white fill in there. So let's just drag that up. So it's FFF, which is all white. That's what we want. Go back to there and that will hide that. Now, we've got that there. We want to be able to create some more of those. So you simply go down to the rounded rectangle. Well, I mean, indeed, you can use any shape, but I'm using the rounded rectangle now just because I can. There's another one there. Let's do a fairly big one down there. And a sort of a square there. Width 2.27, 2.2. Two point two point five. Oh, it's pretty close. That'll do. No good fiddling around there all day. Now let's go back. Use the move tool. Go back and select the first one, which of course is the bottom one there. They stack them in reverse order for some obscure reason, but there we go. That's the one we want there. Top left hand corner. Now I'm going to place an image in there. Let's go find an image to place. And the ones I've used before are already in designer and they're already 
design elements, the AF design. So this will this will place a smart object in there if you like. If you're used to Photoshop, it will put an embedded file in there. Let's go and just place it there. Now you think, well that's pretty ugly, and so it is. But let's just drag that to where we want it, which was in the first one, and we'll use the first one as a mask. Now there it is there, and you can see by looking at that little symbol, see the embedded, it tells you it's an embedded document. Now what you've got to do with embedded documents is make sure you don't move them, because once they're in there, if you move it, Affinity won't be able to find it, which stands to reason, but we've got that in highlight mode. So let's just adjust the size of it slightly so that it fits a little more neatly into the boundary. Now because I've got snapping on, you can see the when I move that, the red horizontal line and the green vertical line tell me that that's centered exactly in the middle of there. Now I can touch anywhere I like outside there and the, the, it unselects it if you like. And you can see because that's an embedded document, if I want to change that, double click on that, it brings it up and I can make changes to that if I like. Let's see if I can make a change rather quickly without doing lots of horrible things to it. Let's just put a triangle in there. There's a triangle, a little grey triangle. Make the fill red so we can see it. Well, it's kind of red. It's a pinkish red. Now that we've got that in there, let's just close that. File, close. And it goes back. Now you can see that that change has taken place in that document, but it's back in the original document where you want it. Let's put another one in there, shall we? That's the next one up. File, place. This is another embedded document. Nice little sleeping pussycat. There we go. That's about the right size. And we've centered it. Nice. Again, what we've got there is the image that we need to put inside the mask so that it stays inside there, you see. And we don't end up with lots and lots of different things. Now we'll go to that one and again we'll place one, two, three. See you soon. Now will this one fit in here? It's probably the wrong shape to start with. See you soon. Uh -huh. Not an ideal image for in there, but that's all right. It's only an exercise and you can see quite easily. There we go. Horizontal and vertical, just what we want. That one there is the last one, number four. Let's go place an image in there and we should have frame number four open and that's a good morning chicken. Now we'll drag that one in again so it masks. You can see how I've got it halfway in there and then you just let it go and there it is in there. Now if I want to center it I've got to select that one there because if I select that one, then the whole thing moves, you see, which is not a bad thing in itself if that's what you need to do. But with that one there, there we go, it's horizontal and vertical, centered in the image, and then just close that up again. Now, that's the 8.5 by 11 page with individual images in there. Now, if you want to change each of those images or any of those images, you go to the layer that it's in and select that. Now you see that one there, I can hide that, but I can go up here to File and Place. Now what's Chicken 1? There's Chicken 1. Let's just go and put Chicken 1 in there instead. Oh, 
there's good morning chicken again so we've got two of those but it's in the right place you see close that down there we go good morning chicken now that's the eight and a half by eleven plain US letter size template and you can use that as you wish now the next one we'll do is doing the same thing only using art boards now art boards I find a little more mm, a little more complex than a, a plain eight and a half by eleven but that's all right you may you may be happy with that and you can see down there locate I'm moving that over there not that I want to put an art board on here mind you I'm going to do the art board one which is that one in its own file like this okay let's move on I'll save that don't forget to save it otherwise you'll have an untitled thing T U T O R I A L tutorial 2 that'll do I'll know what it is when I come to it and just save that right let's move on to the artboard one so now we're going to set up a document like this one and again we go to file new and we're using the letter size and we're in landscape mode which is how we want it width is 11 height is 8 but this time click on create artboard so we'll create the first artboard let's create that now that's all there is to it ignore all the rest of the things we don't need them at the moment we're just going after a plain ordinary 8 by you can see it's 11 inches wide 8.5 inches high now that's too big to fit a second artboard on there so what we've got to do is reduce that in size but don't drag the corners in because you'll change the size of the artboard now as you can see I've already changed the size of this artboard slightly there's the artboard there and within that artboard I've got artboard there with its contents so it can get very confusing with those numbers there but we're talking about changing the size of that artboard and by not moving the corner handles because you'll actually change it from 8.5 by 11 to some other size and you can see we've still got 8.5 by 11 even though I've got it slightly smaller now how do you do that easily enough you go to the navigator and you can use that slider there you can see I'm reducing it in size it does make it a little more difficult to work on there but this is just for explanation now if I click on the navigator I can move that to where I want it now I can fit another 8 by 11 artboard in there and by doing this I simply go to the artboard tool that should come up in a moment there we go artboard tool along about there and I can drag out another artboard that's 8.5 of course the snapping red line is on you see but there's no vertical one so I've got to get back to 11.5 11 11.4321 11 oops zero let's just check that that's the right size 11 inches by 8.5 perfect now to make that easier to work with before we try anything else let me just put that on we'll go up here to view select guides and put a horizontal guide in and a vertical guide in and that puts them right in the middle now because those guidelines will disappear when I'm trying to put artboards inside that artboard what I'll go and do now is go to the pen tool and set the stroke on and probably make the stroke about one point in width it defaults to black and that's fine for the moment now we go up to here click a dot there go down to the bottom click a dot there 
Now, Alt D, D selects that line so that we can go over there and click a dot. If you don't deselect a line, you'll end up with a triangle drawn across the screen. Cross to the other side and click a line. Control D to deselect. Command D or Control D if you're on a Windows machine, I believe. Now we'll just go back up there. Now you've got neat lines drawn in the middle there so that now you can go and select the artboard tool again and you can pull out an artboard in there just the right size. Let's do one from down this corner. Snapping's on so you can see that you've got the right size. There we go, artboard one there and artboard there. So now we've got one, two, three, four new artboards in there. And they're all exactly in the right place. Of course, you drew those lines. Those aren't, but look, go back up there before I uh, make a mistake. Let me save that again. File, save, and I'm saving it as tutorial three just for something to save it as. Now you've got your artboards there. We can place, finding a suitable file, you probably already have these saved, but what I'm going to do here is just place a file in the first artboard there. Now I'll go off, I've got all mine in Dropbox, and now there's a frightful Fall 22 I've got open. That should load in straight away. There we go. Now it's a bit bigger than the rectangular box I've got there, but you can see it fits in there nicely. Now if I just click outside the box, you can see it's in there and I could move it to size if I wanted to. Now this will distort it slightly, which is not what we want, but I guess in there it doesn't matter because there's our little green board all around it. I can go to the next art board seven, file and place. I won't do all of these, Let's see if this one, the Book of the Now there's the Book of the Dead loaded and I'll have to resize this one to bring it in there and then bring that down there. So we've got the red border all around. And there it is there. It's not too badly deformed. Let's put another one in there while we're on a roll. Place a file. That one we've got. There's one there. Caterpillar Day PNG. Now, is that going to take two hours to load or is it already there? Not too bad, that one. And I'll bring that up there. Slight deformation, but that's all right too. There we go. Put that in there. Now, just to keep up the theme, and why not? There's that one there. Whoops. Bring that up there. Bring that up there. Now, there we go. Now, I'll reduce everything in size there so I can see all those images. Bring it over so it's centered. Bring it up a little bit. There we go. That's really all there is to it. We needn't go any further because what you've got there is an artboard with simple shapes in the artboard and one artboard embedded in the artboard. This one is another 8 by 8.5 by 11 artboard with four artboards embedded in it. And you can see you've got lots of over here. You've got lots of layers, and you can tidy those up by oops, collapsing them. There we go. And you could also rename them. Now, that's about all there is to it, really. Hope you enjoyed that tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe, 
ring the bell and send it all to your friends. Now, if I just close that down again. There we go. We're back to there. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.